you don't have to hate yourself now to become a better version of yourself in the future. And I want you to remember this for this video and any other future video that you watch on glowing up because self-love is the biggest glow up secret along with the 14 others that I'm about to share in this video. And once you understand that, glowing up is not difficult to do at all. Replace your morning Instagram scroll with Pinterest. Of all the bad habits that I have ever had to quit, quitting scrolling Instagram first thing in the morning has been the hardest. And earlier I would feel guilty and I would shame myself for doing this and going on my phone first thing in the morning. But then I came across this hack and I made just one little switch, which is instead of going on Instagram right in the morning, because I'm already in the habit of scrolling in the morning, I just go to Pinterest instead. And that has been life-changing. I love Pinterest and most of my Pinterest feed is now curated to show things from my vision board, which means that this helps my visualization and my manifestation process as well. And it fills me up with all of this motivated energy, all of this gratitude energy that earlier on Instagram would be spent, you know, looking at other people's pictures and videos and feeling like I'm not enough in life. But ever since I switched to Pinterest, it's just made that mindset shift so much easier. It has helped my manifestation so much. It has helped my visualization so much. And I absolutely 100% recommend it, especially if you find find it very, very hard to quit your habit of scrolling your phone in the morning. The easiest thing that you can do is just make the switch from social media to Pinterest and trust me, it will change how you see your life. And if your Pinterest is not yet curated to show you things that are a part of your vision board, just save a few different pins as a part of your vision board and your Pinterest feed will automatically get curated. Invest in skin and hair care products that work for you. I cannot even tell you the number of times that I have invested money in skincare and hair care products just because they were trending on the internet. And all that resulted in was messing up everything about my hair and my skin. The key to having healthy looking hair and healthy looking skin is to use products that suit your particular skin and hair type. But how do you figure your type out? So I'm going to share two ways that I have used in the past and that have worked decently well for me. Keep in mind that this is not the most scientific approach in the world, but it does help you get a fair idea of what your skin and hair type is like. For your skin, just do a wash test, which is basically washing your face with a gentle cleanser and then leaving it without applying any other product afterwards for like 30 minutes, right? Now, if in this period, your skin tends to get shiny and oily, then you have an oily skin type. If it tends to get dry and flaky, you have a dry skin type. If it gets oily only in this zone, then you have a combination skin type, which is my skin type because it's dry in this area and like oily in this area. And if it stays like hydrated, moisturized, it doesn't feel tight at all, then you have normal skin type, which I think is quite rare to be honest. And remember that your skin type can change over time due to age, due to the products that you use, maybe if you have skin damage or sun damage, and those things can actually alter the type of your skin. Now coming to your hair, how do you judge the type of your hair? One thing you can do is a soak test to figure out the porosity of your hair. Porosity is the amount of moisture your hair holds. And I've just found out that this is quite an important metric in choosing the right products for your hair type. So how you can do this is once your hair is clean, and you know those hair strands that come off in your brush when you're combing just take a few of those strands and put them in a bowl of water make sure you're you're using clean hair strands put them in a bowl of water and like let them sit for a couple of minutes if they sink down to the bottom that means you have high porosity hair which means that the cuticles on your hair is open and it is more prone to dryness and frizz after you've washed it. Uh, right now, that is what my hair type is like. If your hair is just floating on top, that means you have low porosity hair, which means your cuticles are like shut tight and your hair does not absorb moisture very well. So the products you'll need are ones that are lightweight in nature, have molecules that are small enough to penetrate those hair follicles despite the cuticles being shut. And if your hair is somewhere in the middle, like if it's floating somewhere in the middle of the water bowl, then you have medium porosity hair, which is kind of like normal hair. Now, right now, because of damage due to heat and like using hair dryers in the winter, my hair has become more high porosity. Again, your hair type changes with changes in season. It changes with what products you use on your hair. If you do a lot of heat styling, all of that can just damage your hair cuticles. And the more damaged the hair is, the more high porosity it tends 
to be. Be Blunt were kind enough to sponsor a portion of this video and I got to try their intense moisture range for my hair. So even though I have straight fine hair, after washing they tend to become frizzy and dry which tells me that they are high porosity. And this Be Blunt range is enriched with jojoba oil, vitamin E and their signature shine tonic to really nourish the hair strands and help keep that moisture locked in. You can see how much more manageable my hair is after washing and conditioning. I absolutely hate frizz, so this is a huge win for me. Plus, these products are super affordable, so I don't have to like shell out thousands of bucks every month just to manage my hair. If you have frizzy and damaged hair, I definitely suggest giving this a try and you can use my code ADITI2024 to get 20% off on beblunt.com. You can also find the products on Amazon, Nykaa and Flipkart. Track your menstrual cycle. Understanding your body and understanding how your body functions is a form of self-care. And I am going to make a dedicated video on your period cycle, on understanding your menstrual cycle, on syncing your work in your life with your period. But I'm still in the research phase there. I'm still learning a lot about it. So till then, the one thing that I want you guys to do is track your menstrual cycle, track your period, start tracking your periods if you don't do that already. Because by tracking your menstrual cycle, you'll not only get prepared for when you're about to get your period, but you're also able to track a lot of other factors in your life. You're able to understand your mood swings, you're able to understand your cravings, you're able to understand the changes that are happening in your body with each phase in the cycle. And this insight basically allows you to adjust your self-care routine, your exercise routine, your work schedule, your eating patterns, etc. Everything according to your body's needs and work with your body instead of working against it. For example, when I know that when I start ovulating, during that period, I start to get acne on my face. There are hormonal changes that are happening. So I do feel bloated. I start craving more spicy foods, etc. And that phase, I'm able to adjust my diet accordingly. I eat and drink more warm foods. I start to incorporate tea tree oil into my skincare routine to, you know, prevent a lot of acne breakouts, all of that jazz. And that has been only possible because I've been tracking my periods. Now, how can you track your periods? If you have an iPhone, the health app has a period cycle tracker and you can just use that and input your dates, etc. And then it gives you predictions as well. But if not, if you own an Android phone, you can also download an app. Most of them are free. Tracking is free in all of them. So there's Flow, there's My Calendar, there's period tracker. I used to use my calendar for the longest time and it really, really helped. It's a very nice app. I would 100% recommend it that you use it as well. So basically, whenever your period comes, just mark it on that calendar and then it keeps sync of what dates your periods have come on. So if you ever skip a cycle, you know that something is off. You can also uh, mark or measure other things like your ovulation, your sexual activity, if you're sexually active and all of those things. And that just helps you keep a much better track of your menstrual health overall. Look presentable every single day. How you look impacts how you feel to a huge extent. If you don't like the way that you look, it impacts your self-confidence, your self-perception, the way you feel about yourself. And people can be as idealistic as they want to and say looks don't matter. But in reality, they don't just matter to outside people. Like that's secondary. They actually impact your own perception about yourself. So getting up and making that small effort of wearing a decent outfit, you know, doing your hair, maybe putting on some kajal and lip balm. All of that goes a long way in improving how you feel about yourself. And when you feel good about yourself, you automatically radiate that energy outwards and it appears like a glow up. And how I like to judge whether I am dressed well enough is if I have to step out of the house right now, can I do that without changing my clothes? If I can, then I am dressed well enough. Take your vitamins. Ladies, vitamins are not bad for you. In fact, in most cases, they are essential and they should be an essential part of your regular diet. I get a lot of comments on the videos where I talk about vitamins. People saying, you should not take vitamins. You should get all your nutrients from natural foods. Guys, yes. In an ideal world, that should be the case. But we don't live in an ideal world. In today's day and age, most food out there is adulterated, 
most food is also not nutrient dense so a lot of the nutrition that you should be getting from food you are not getting from food which is why you need to supplement with vitamins with minerals with other supplements from time to time so that your body is getting the proper nutrition it needs most people in india don't get enough protein from their diet most people in india are deficient in vitamin d despite the fact that india is one of those countries that gets the maximum amount of sunlight in a year and why is this because we spend so much of our time indoors most people are deficient in calcium most women are deficient in iron so if your body is not getting enough nutrition from food and you also don't take supplements you're just barreling towards worse and worse health and you don't want to do that to yourself taking supplements can help you you close that gap that your nutrition is not able to fulfill very important to know right now the supplements that i am taking are collagen whey protein because i work out every single day and my protein requirement doesn't just get fulfilled from the food that i'm eating i also take vitamin d on a weekly basis i take vitamin c and vitamin b on a daily basis and i also take an ayurvedic syrup for pcod right now right so you don't have to go and blindly follow this supplement intake that i am taking right now please don't do that consult a nutritionist get your blood test done figure out if you are deficient in something figure out look at your diet and see if you are getting enough protein if not then you need to supplement if you are deficient in something you need to supplement with that so make sure you consult a nutritionist before you go around and just start taking multivitamins that is what i did and that is how i know what to take and when to take follow the 3s rule which is sip sunlight and self reflect lena lifts spoke about this in her video absolutely love her channel and i cannot agree more it sounds super simple just three things but it is so powerful just ensuring that you do these three things every single day can significantly improve your mood your mental health and even your physical health first is sunlight it is nature's mood booster it fixes your circadian rhythm helps improve the production of vitamin d in the body and i feel like just getting enough sunlight overall makes you a much happier person i would recommend getting it right in the morning just 10 to 15 minutes is enough to begin with if you don't get enough sunlight if you do then getting an additional 10 to 15 minutes in the morning is a boost too next is sipping on water lots of it staying hydrated is the ultimate life hack so when i had gotten an infection in my spine and i felt sick and i was taking like very strong antibiotics the doctor told me to drink like 6 to 7 liters of water in a day and my god it completely transformed my skin my just like overall glow in the body it made me glow up like nothing else so i would highly highly recommend that you try staying as hydrated as possible you can carry a water bottle everywhere and make it like your accessory or you can just put a reminder on your phone like i have done to ensure that you remember to drink enough water through the day and finally self reflect you know how big i am on self reflection <laughs> just taking a few moments out each day to check in with yourself check in with how you're feeling are you feeling okay why are you not feeling okay if you're not feeling okay things like that you can do it right in the morning like i like to do my gratitude practice right in the morning and that i count as a part of self reflection or you can do it in the evening before you go to bed and just you know wind down before you end the day and that is equally as helpful the three s's are like giving yourself a mini self care moment every single day and girl you deserve that time for yourself walk every single day if you are not already doing it you need to start walking is insanely good for your health it is one of the best low intensity cardio exercises it helps balance your blood sugar and that is so important for us pcod girlies it's important for people overall and in general but for people with pcod and diabetes walking is a boon and it helps you stay active throughout the day without putting additional stress on your body especially if you are dealing with an injury or if you are dealing with problems where you can't do a lot of high intensity exercises so a few things that help me build a walking habit is one getting a walking pad i absolutely love this you don't have to get this but it really helped me especially because i spend a lot of time indoors and i spend a lot of time working on my computer so this just helps me stay active while i'm working next i have a way to track that step goal which is again watch you can use your phone you can use any sort of fitness tracker that measures your steps every single day and that just keeps you on track a lot and the final thing i do is actually have podcasts and audiobooks to listen to while i'm walking so i look forward to that time every single day and that just helps keep me motivated and stay active at the same 
time at least 15 minutes of personal time every single day i want you guys to promise me that no matter how packed your schedule is through the day you are going to take 15 minutes just for yourself you need to carve out that time for yourself. And this is not time that you spend being productive or you know doing your self-reflection, none of that. This is time you just take out to do something that you personally enjoy. It could be sitting alone with your thoughts or pondering over the day. It could be dancing like nobody is watching. It could be making your favorite cup of coffee. It could be watching a YouTube video. It could be watching like a 15 minute episode of something, anything that lifts your mood and makes you feel happy and joyous and all of that. Just take out 15 minutes every single day and do this for yourself. And I want you to promise me that you're going to do it because I know that as women, we tend to overlook this personal time. And a lot of people think that this is not very relevant and that, you know, how important can this be? Girl, it is going to change your life. When you start taking this time out for yourself, you start telling your mind and your body that you are a priority and you need to know that you are a priority. And just 15 minutes a day is not too much for that. You need to remind yourself that you're not just a list of tasks and priorities and things you do for other people. You are a beautifully complex individual who has dreams, desires and, you know, wants of her own. Plan your meals in advance. I know that this sounds like a chore, but hear me out. Planning your meals in advance is not just about staying organized. It is also ensuring that your body gets the proper nutrition and you don't just resort to junk food when you feel hungry and there is nothing in your kitchen or your pantry to feed you. It's basically a promise that you're making with yourself that you are going to nourish your body with the right ingredients, with the right food. And this way you actually also end up saving a lot of money on Swiggy Zomato and you end up saving a lot of money on groceries as well because when you plan it out in advance, you buy the things that you need and not just wasteful stuff. I like to do this on a Sunday. I will just sit and plan the lunch and the dinner that I want to have for the entire week so that I can order my groceries on Sunday itself. And then I just tell my Didi what to cook so it doesn't take a lot of effort it really helps that i have somebody who can come and cook for me and i don't have to spend all of that time doing it myself if you live completely by yourself and if you don't have house help and you prep your meals yourself it is a good idea to take out a few hours on sundays or on saturdays or any weekend when you have the time and just cook your meals or pre-cook your meals in advance and that ensures that you're getting enough nutrition throughout the week because your nutrition is essential to your glow up if you eat healthy, it shows in your skin, it shows in the way that you appear, it shows in your body structure, all of that. And it also makes you feel good from within. So when you feel good, you automatically look good. Practice JOMO or the joy of missing out. This is like the exact opposite of FOMO or the fear of missing out. It's about finding joy and contentment in your own company and in the simple pleasures of everyday life. This is like the best part of romanticizing your own life. Simple things like turning a regular night into a self-care ritual or turning your coffee shop run into this really peppy thing that you do for yourself, you know? Instead of constantly looking at other people and feeling less than and feeling like your life is not enough, you stay content in whatever you are doing right now. You romanticize it so that you become happy with yourself, with where you are in life. This does not mean that you don't have ambitions anymore. This does not mean that you don't strive to be a better person. It just means that you are also grateful for your life in the moment and you're not constantly chasing after somebody's picture perfect highlight reel. Jomo is such a liberating mindset to have because it reminds you to connect with yourself, to reconnect with the simple joys that make you happy instead of just chasing after arbitrary goals because society is telling you that those are the goals that you need to chase after. Create a feel good or a confidence boost music playlist to play whenever you're feeling down or whenever you're feeling not as confident. Music is so powerful. It has the incredible ability to transform our mood and having a pick me up playlist is one of the best hacks that you can have ever. 
one thing that I think we should all do is I will put up in comment with my playlist so that you guys can access it, see if those songs suit your vibe. And I want you guys to create your playlist and share the Spotify link or the YouTube music link wherever you're creating it in reply to that pinned comment so that we can all share each other's songs and then curate our own playlist and have a lot of fun along the way. Create an end shift routine. This is something that I have personally found to be a game changer. What you need to do is at the end of every day when you're done with your homework or your office work or you know whatever it is that you're doing at the present moment, you need to mentally check out of that work for the day and then prepare mentally for the next day of work. And it becomes super easy to do once you start treating this like a shift at a restaurant. Every time an employee's shift ends, they pack everything up, they prepare for the next day, you know, they clean everything up and that is what you want to do as well, right? So let's say you're done with work for the day, you will shut down your laptop, you will clean up your desk, you will create a to-do list to plan for the next day and then you are done for the day. You are mentally checking out and you need to create one of physical separation so that your work desk, etc., is separate from, you know, your sleep area or your TV area or whatever. And creating that physical separation actually allows you to create that mental separation as well. Especially for people who work from home like me or people who have very long working hours, it can be very difficult to have that separation between your work life and your personal life. And this is one of the downfalls of the hustle culture. But when you start doing this little practice of creating a shift and then ending that shift and ensuring that you're prepared well for the next day's shift, you're able to mentally clock out and not take your work home or take your work to your sleep area. Magnesium, melatonin and chamomile tea before bed. This is my little nighttime ritual that has completely transformed my sleep quality. I kid you not. Now, this is like a secret wind down night ritual that I've been doing for the past month or so. And guys, absolutely love it. So magnesium has been proven to help with sleep. It helps calm down your nervous system. It helps reduce stress. And magnesium is also generally a mineral that our body is deficient in. So it really helps improve the overall quality of sleep. Then there's melatonin, which is a neurotransmitter that your brain releases to signal to your body that you're now ready to sleep. But because most of us spend so much time in front of the screen, we are indoors most of that time, that melatonin production cycle is actually a little messed up, which is why people who sleep very late will have that production happen very late in their brain, in their body, right? Uh, so getting a supplement actually helps induce that little bit of melatonin in your brain so that you can fall asleep faster and then have a better quality of sleep overall. I have found that taking this supplement really helps boost like my sleep routine and my sleep quality. And finally, there is chamomile tea, which is again this warm, cozy thing that I have in a cup and I drink before bed every night. So I like the ritual part of it, making that tea, sitting in bed, sipping it. And chamomile has been used for like ages in ancient Chinese medicine, in Ayurveda to induce sleep, to help lower stress levels in the body, all of that jazz. Now I like this entire combination, I take all three things and like at 11 p.m. I'm right down there sleeping in bed. But don't just take my word for it. I would suggest that if you want to make this a part of your ritual as well, just try these things individually first and see what effect they have on your body. Because my mom tried taking melatonin and it didn't really suit her. She started getting a lot of these vivid dreams that was not really helpful for her sleep. So a lot of times uh, things can have like this re little reaction side effect. So make sure you try these things out individually. If they work for you, then go ahead and make this a part of your ritual. If they don't, then see which ones work for you and make those a part of your ritual. Sleep is your best friend. Sleep is the ultimate glow up secret. It's like the corner of your health, your well-being, your beauty, your stress levels, everything. If your sleep is fixed, almost everything in your life is fixed. And I know that I've spoken about this multiple times before. But if there is one takeaway that you have from this video, it is to fix your sleep. It will solve half the problems in your life. Because when you're resting, it is time for your body to recover. It is time for your cells to recover. It is time for your brain to recover. It is time for your body to get rid of all of the toxins. Prepare again for the next day. So if you're not getting enough sleep, if you're sleeping late, that directly impacts every single aspect of your physical and your mental 
health. You guys need to remember this. So a few things that I have personally done to ensure that I go to bed on time and improve the quality of my sleep is one, make that sleep cocktail that I just spoke about. It is so effective. Second, I have put my phone on an automatic timer so that at 9.30 p.m. every single day, it just goes into sleep mode automatically. And that means that I stop getting any sort of notifications from clients, from anybody else, except for like my family members and my partner. And that means I don't get distracted by my phone. Third, I do not switch on any white lights in the evening. So once the sun sets, the only lights on in my entire house are yellow lights. And that basically signals to my brain automatically that it's, you know, time to wind down and go to sleep and go to bed, all of that jazz. And the final thing I do is I use my bedroom and my bed only for sleeping. I don't nap during the day. I ensure that I don't do any work in my bed or studying in my bed. I ensure that I don't watch a lot of TV in my bed and all of that jazz and that ensures that that place is like sacred for sleeping. So once I enter my bedroom at night at 10.30ish, 11ish, my brain automatically gets that signal that it's time to sleep. If you have trouble sleeping, you can try out these hacks and I am hoping that they will be as helpful for you as they have been for me. So tell me ladies, how many of these do you already follow and how many of these were new to you? And make sure you check out all of ours, each other's confidence boosting playlist in the pinned comment below. And make sure you check out this video next because YouTube says that you are going to love it. I hope that you found all of these glow up secrets is really helpful and really enjoyable. If you have something to share, let me know in the comments and I'm going to see you guys in the next one very, very soon. Bye.